Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a couple of application problems that involve equa quadratic equations. Alright, so our first one we have a parking lot has a length that is six yards greater than its width. The area of the lot is 520 square yards. Find the length and width. All right, so anytime you have an application problem and it asks you to find something, that typically is going to tell you what your variables are going to represent. So we're looking for the length and the width. So I'm gonna go ahead and let L be the length of the lot and W is gonna be the width of the lot. All right, so what do we know? We know the area is 520 square yards. So that means our area is 520. And we have a parking lot. They don't tell us that it's a rectangle, but we're gonna make that assumption. This is gonna be a rectangular parking lot because the, lit, the, the length and the width um, would have to be different if we weren't talking about a rectangle. So the area of a rectangle, remember, is length times width. So we've got 520 equals length times width. And we know that the length is six yards greater than the width. Well, if the length is six yards greater than the width, that means that the length is bigger. So that's telling us that our length is going to be our width plus six yards. So let's plug that in for L. So we'll get W plus six is our length times our width, W. And then what we have here is a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and distribute our W. We get 520 equals W squared plus six W. We can solve this by any of the methods that we've seen, factoring, um, completing the square, quadratic formula, Factoring, if it works, tends to be the quickest. And I believe factoring will work on this one. Let's go ahead and move everything to one side by subtracting 520 from both sides. Now we need to find the factors of 520, negative 520 that add to six. Best way to do that is to use, the quad, is to use your calculator we want to find the factors of negative 520, so we're going to put negative 520 in, divide it by x. You want to make sure that your table set, so second window, make sure both of those are set to auto, independent and dependent, and then go to second table. And then what we're looking for is we're looking for two numbers that have a difference of 6. So. Let's see, five and negative 104, well, those are too far apart. Eight and 65 is still too far apart. 10 and negative 52, 13 and negative 40. I'm looking for whole numbers in the Y column. All right, 20 and negative 26. Well, those have a difference of six, but if we add those, we're gonna get a negative six. But what if we switch and we use a positive 26 and a negative 20? Since our leading coefficient here is a one, those are the factors we want. We're gonna have a, we want a positive 26 and a negative 20. When we set each of those equal to zero, however, we're gonna get minus 26 to get that W by itself, and we're gonna add 20. Well, a negative 26 cannot be the width, so we're gonna, eliminate that one, we know that our width has to be 20 yards, that's one of them, and then we'll plug that in to find our length, and our length is going to be 26 yards, so that is the length and width of our parking lot. Alright, our next example we're looking at a ball is thrown vertically upward from the edge of a building that is 32 feet tall with an initial velocity of 16 feet per second 
the distance s, s is uh, the letter that we use for distance, it comes from the Latin word for distance, starts with an S is why, it, where, why we use that. In feet of the ball from the ground after t seconds is given by this equation. So let's just look and see what we're actually doing here. So we've got a building here that is 32 feet tall. And we are going to be standing on the top of this building and we're going to throw a ball from that top straight up and it's going to come down and hit the ground. And the height of the ball, the distance between the ground and the ball after t seconds is given by this equation. So after how many seconds does the ball hit the ground? Well, how many seconds means we're going to solve for t, and when the ball hits the ground, well, the distance between the ball and the ground, when it's hitting the ground, that means that s is equal to zero. So we're gonna plug in s equals zero, and solve this for t. Now I notice 16 and 32, we've got a lot of common factors there. Um, so I'm actually gonna factor out that greatest common factor and rearrange it in the same step. So I like to have my leading coefficient, my t squared, I like to have it as a positive number. Between 32, 16t, and negative 16t squared, we have a GCF of 16, but I want that t squared to be a positive number, so I'm gonna factor out a negative 16. So when we do that, we'll get 32 is gonna become a negative two because we want it to be positive. If we're gonna pull out a negative, it's gonna change the sign. 16t is gonna be negative t, and the negative 16t squared is gonna be plus t squared. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange that and write it in standard form. So we've got a positive t squared, a negative t, and a negative two. If we factor that, t squared minus t minus two, factors of negative two that add to negative one are a negative two and a positive one. We didn't pull out a t here. There's no t that comes from this first factor here. So that means there's not gonna be a solution. Our only solutions are gonna come when t minus two equals zero. So that's when t equals two and when t plus one equals zero, we're gonna subtract one and we'll get t equal negative one. Well, negative one doesn't make sense in the context of this problem because here t is the number of seconds and so that's gonna be before we throw the ball. It's not hitting the ground before we throw the ball. Um, and so two seconds is our answer. So that means it's gonna hit this ball or hit this ground um, at the two second mark. So after how many seconds does the ball pass the top of the building? So we wanna know when is the ball right here on its way back down? Well, if it's passing the top of the building, that means it's 32 feet from the ground. So top of the building means that our S is gonna be 32. We're still looking for how many seconds, so we're still going to solve for T. We're gonna plug in 32 for our S. We're using that same equation that we used on the other one, 32 plus 16T minus 16T squared. All right, if we wanna get this all on one side so that we can try to factor it or use the quadratic formula, we're gonna subtract 32 from both sides, but when we subtract 32 from both sides, those are gonna cancel out and we'll get zero, and then I'm gonna go ahead and write my remainder uh, in standard form. So I'm gonna write my negative 16t squared first, and then a positive 16t after that, and then we can factor out our greatest common factor. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a negative out because I like having my first term positive, and Oh, I've got flies bugging me. And GCF here is going to be a 16T. 
So if we pull out a negative 16t, that's going to leave us with just a t for our first term. And then positive 16t divided by negative 16t is going to give us a negative 1. Here we do have a t that we pulled out different from the previous one, so we're going to set each of these equal to 0. So negative 16t equals 0, well that will be equal to 0 when t equals 0. Or t minus 1 equals 0 is going to be equal to 0 when t equals 1. Now both of those are possible. Those are both numbers that are positive or at least non-negative. So let's go back and look at our picture. We're throwing this from the top of the building. So I'm showing it that the ball's a couple of feet off the ground where you're holding it, but technically what you're doing is you're squatting down and your hand is on the edge of the, um, the building as you are throwing it. And so that zero there is that we got as our solution is actually the, when we first threw the ball is t equals zero. And so when it's coming back on its way down, that means we want the second answer. And so one second is going to give us that value. All right, I'll see you guys next time.